30 years ago tonight, Denzel Washington appeared on the Arsenio Hall show while promoting the film Malcolm X. He talked at length about the Nation of Islam leader and other people important in the scene, Elijah Muhammad and uh, Louis Farrakhan. But most significantly, Denzel talks about the role of the media in fueling the racial division in the United States. And while he would probably be pleased how the direction of media rage has shifted almost 180 degrees, the style of divisive reporting and the nature of control via that, that power continues and will never change. Whoever wields the pen holds the power. doesn't matter if the pen is like, you know, in the metaverse or any of that crap. This is a fascinating interview revealing that not much has really changed. Can it? I'd rather you come back, though, if you can. Um, my first guest won an Academy Award as Best Supporting Actor in Glory. And now critics are predicting already that he might take home another one for his performance in Malcolm X as Malcolm X. Please welcome Denzel Washington. Somebody threw me this. It's yes, finished. yes. This is the, uh, the, the a gift from the uh, Watts Willowbrook Boys Club. I've, I've become the uh, national spokesman for the Boys Clubs of America. I grew up in the Boys Club. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're, we're talking about trying to find solutions to some of the problems that we're having in this country with young people. And the Boys Club is doing positive things. Boys and Girls Club mm -hmm. are doing positive things for, for young people. So I'm trying to support them. I'm, I'm uh, living proof that, that, that their system works. Yeah, now, when you say you grew up in the Boys Club, grew up That's in the where Boys you hung Club. hung out, played ball, or everything. Every, hung out, played basketball, learned about life, learned about uh, uh, everything. I was a counselor for about seven or eight years in, mm -hmm. the, in the Boys Club systems, and their sleepaway camps, day camps. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get to Malcolm, man. Um, why did you want to do this? The film? Yeah. I, uh, how could I not? Yeah, and, and it's not the first time you've uh, been in this role. Right, I did a play about 11 years ago uh, in New York, off, 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 off Broadway, which means you don't get paid, basically. <laughs> and uh, uh, about Malcolm X, I, I, I have to admit, I knew absolutely nothing about him other than, in general terms, what he, who he was. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, when I got the script, I was flipping through it. It was a two-character play about uh, Malcolm X, a fictional meeting between Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad, who was his spiritual teacher, leader. And I'm flipping through it. I said, well, okay, Elijah's got a big part. Malcolm, no, Malcolm, Malcolm, Malcolm. And I said, all right, this is pretty good. I mean, I literally did not know what it was all about, but I, the first thing that I did uh, in researching the part was to read the autobiography of Malcolm X and uh, never been the same since. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've heard in the past that Norman Jewison might attack the project and mm -hmm. Richard Pryor like eight years ago was talking about it at the Comedy Store one night with a bunch of guys. Why has it taken so long? We've seen King, we've seen Biko. Why has it taken so long to get to Malcolm in film? Well, Malcolm was strong, you know. A lot of people were afraid of him. Uh, there's, a, there's a misconception that, that he, he, he believed in violence, you know. He was not a believer in violence. Uh, the, the, the doctrine to, to my best understanding of the Nation of Islam is not a doctrine of violence. Uh, what he talked about was if, if for example, if, if someone is putting a rope around your neck to hang you, and you fight this man to get the rope around, from around your neck, mm -hmm. who's violent? The one that's putting the rope around your neck or the one that's fighting to get the rope off of, mm -hmm. of your neck? I mean, anyone would, would fight in that situation. So he, he was just saying, get the rope off your neck, yeah. you know, by any means necessary. Hello. Uh, I was, yeah. Um, yes. 
I know you all want to try to educate right. as well as entertain with this right. project. Somebody, Caucasian person, said to me, um, didn't Malcolm hate white people? Now, with these misconceptions out there, with these uh, preconceived mm -hmm. ideas of what he mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. How will you all get everyone to come to the theater? Well, for example, I mean, the, 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 the image that was presented on Malcolm was that he was just a hate monger, you know, that he, that he hated people, that he wanted to kill all white people and this kind of thing. And uh, for me, the essence of the story of, of Malcolm X is one of, of evolution. Uh, he had some uh, traumatic things happen to him as a child, the way his father was killed. Uh, uh, they felt by a, a clan type organization. And he was only five years old at the time. Now imagine you being a five-year-old and this being a six-year-old. Imagine this being one of your earliest experiences or remembrances of, of whites mm -hmm. and how they reacted to your own father. But he was constantly evolving. I mean, at, at the, the time that he, he passed away, was killed, his uh, ideology was different from, from, it, from when, it, when he was in the Nation of Islam. He wasn't, uh, I wouldn't say he was all for integration and that kind of thing, but he, he was pro-black. He wasn't anti-white, but he was, mm -hmm. he was looking out for African-American people. I mean, you must remember that, you know, one of the most terrible crimes in the history of mankind took place in this country. For close to 350 years, black people were murdered, raped, hung, and forced to work for no money. For, not for a year, not for three years, not for 10 years, not for 50 years, but for 350 years. That's a long, long time, and that debt has not been paid. So Malcolm was the first one, and even before Malcolm, the Nation of Islam was the first organization that was pointing out the fact that there's been an imbalance. And they were, they were looking it right in the eye, and he, was their, he, was, he became their biggest spokesman and, and their most uh, uh, powerful speaker. And he confronted that issue. He said, this, this debt has to be paid. This has to be balanced out. This has to be dealt with. Were killed in this country by white people uh, over, the, over the course of uh, 300 some odd years of slavery. Mm -hmm. And we don't really deal with that. Black people don't really deal with it. White people don't really deal with it. You know, we have to really look at what happened here. And uh, in a sense, we all need therapy. Yeah. You know, serious, serious therapy. I mean, you can legislate some, uh, some, some laws, and, uh, and there were wonderful things that went on in the 50s and 60s with the civil rights movement, and we were allowed to, to sit in the front of the bus or, or go to the bathroom next to white people or drink water next to them or whatever, and that's wonderful. That's great. Great strides were made in education, and all of those things are, are wonderful. But you can't legislate love, and you can't change the way people think, and I like to think that they're a small minority. So I think that uh, we have to go beyond just uh, some legislation and we have to take a, a serious look at each other and realize that there's one God, that there's one world, and that there's one people. And if we can't all live together, uh, uh, let the therapy begin right now. Uh, now this clip, <laughs> Having said all of that, this is this is when uh, Malcolm was in the Nation of Islam, and his his do he was still uh, uh, a strong believer that. Uh, well, let me let me. Uh, we'll be right back with Denzel Washington. And those of you who think that. You perhaps came here to hear us tell you to turn the other cheek to the brutality of the white man. I say again, you came to the wrong place. What happened? We don't teach you to turn the other cheek. We don't teach you to turn the other cheek in the south, and we don't teach you to turn the other cheek in the north. We teach you to you to carry yourselves in in a respectable way but at the same time we teach you that anyone who puts his hand on you do your best to see that he doesn't put it on anybody else um, you see, what what malcolm x represents i think historically 
he represents so many things, but was that he was a wake up call. He was a slap in the face. It, it's, it's, it's like a, that, that had been such an imbalance for so long. We didn't need a, 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 a passive sort of a, a, a response to what had happened to us for so long. I mean, a, not, not to say those who believe in nonviolence are, I'm not trying to negate them, but I'm saying we needed something so strong, especially at that time in the, in the 40s and 50s and early 60s, and even now, really. We needed someone to speak out so strongly, and he was that. He, 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 you know, he upset people. He made people nervous. He makes people nervous now. But he was, in, 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 when you look back in history, he was because he shook things up. He said things the way he felt, and he, and, he, and he felt it was the truth, and he spoke from his heart. Someone had to try. He, he, he represented our chance to sort of get back at, at all to us for so long. People had been held down so long, oppressed for so long. And this guy got up there and said, I'm not afraid of anybody. I'll say anything that I think is the truth, and I don't care what happens to me. If I die, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And people were like, yeah, we, you know, he was like a, a strong cup of coffee. Yeah. But no cream. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know if you noticed, um, but in that clip, when you look near Malcolm, behind Malcolm, there's a gentleman who, at that time, he was known as Louis X. You all know him as Louis Farrakhan. Right. Um, young man yeah. listening to Malcolm. Now, it's been said, I, 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 I haven't heard it from him personally, but I've heard him say that he patterned himself. Mm -hmm. his speech patterns and, and, and different things after Malcolm and he followed him. There's a lot of tapes that I've seen and you'll always see him back there. Yeah. You know, going to school. Have you talked to anyone uh, from the nation to find out what they think of the movie? Has anyone screened it? I haven't talked it? to them since they've screened the movie. Uh, we had a lot of uh, input from the Nation of Islam. In fact, they, they taught us, they gave us sort of a, a training program, a food training uh, prior to the film. But uh, their major concern, I, I to, to my understanding, is uh, uh, how Elijah Muhammad is, is presented or represented in the film because he's a spiritual leader. You know, Elijah Muhammad is the, is the man who's responsible for literally bringing Malcolm X and, and thousands of other black men uh, back from the dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the Nation of Islam has rehabilitated and cleaned up more convicts, more drug addicts, more criminals uh, of, of uh, African-American descent than any organization then in the history of America. Are, are you uh, happy with the way the movie dealt with um, the relationship between Malcolm and Elijah as far as them, uh, I guess, having a falling out? Well, you know, the difficult thing the film is that you have to compromise somewhere. I mean, th this film is being, they say it's too long now. And, and it's 320? You, yeah, three hours and 20 minutes. And you, you can't get it all in. I mean, you just can't get everything in. It's so, you know, I keep hearing people say, oh, well, where's this guy? Where's that guy? Where's Muhammad Ali? Where, well, you know, there were, yeah, there were 10,000 people he met, but we can't parade everybody, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, 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 you, have to, you have to use dramatic license at, cer at a certain point. And you just have to cut down and, and, and try and use different things. Yeah. Malcolm had a sense of humor. Yeah. Um, and you kind of showed that side of him, too. Right, right, right. I mean, again, you know, there was just one sort of uh, image of him that was presented. This angry black man. You know, at a time where it, it, it meant nothing to call black people niggas. They were talking about, oh, them niggas, nigga this, nigga that. But when, when a black man came along and said, white this and white that, they said, oh, he's violent. Mm -hmm. He's angry. Well, you know, he's, he had a reason to be angry, you know. Yeah. Um, years ago, and I, I'm sure every black man has or should um, read the autobiography, uh, the Alex Haley. Um, White folks, too. Should have read it. Should read it. Yeah. The one thing that I, I hope this film does more than anything else, first of all, I hope that it, it can be a healing force, a, a positive force to bring people together. That's my desire. That's my desire. But I hope it will also lead people to think for themselves, make decisions for themselves, and be very, very careful of the information that you receive over the airways, news, through whatever. You know, for example, 
with the with the riots here in Los Angeles. I don't even want to call it the riots. See, that's that's what I'm talking about. That's what they call it, and that's what I begin to call it. It wasn't a riot. People were just tired of what was going on, but they concentrated on what building was burning. There were people down there doing positive things, helping out, cleaning up, and they were literally sitting over a fire trying to blow on it to, to get it to get bigger so they can shoot it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's all. I mean, you know, everybody knows what I'm talking about. All they, all they showed you was people, things being burned, and they kept calling it a racial thing. When you had white stealing, black stealing, Spanish stealing, you had all kinds of people out there stealing. You know, and that's not what they want to focus on. They want to, they want to keep blacks and whites at each other's throats. They want to keep Koreans and blacks and whites and Jews at each other's throats. You see, so that at the top, they're making money. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. The money's being made and we're down there fighting each other. Oh, it's them white folks. Oh, the white one says it's them black folks. Black one said it's them Koreans, they the problem. Meanwhile, money's being made, but fortunately, the people spoke on November 3rd. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Um, what, just, just very quickly, Marlon, what I was going to uh, ask was how close did Spike, as a director of the film, stay to the autobiography? Oh, we went in and out. I mean, we, we kept changing, because uh, uh, well, there really weren't any speeches in the autobiography, but there was a lot of wisdom, and we tried to use as much as we could. And, but, you know, again, that book is 400 pages, so we just couldn't, you know, put it all in. I, in, in fact, even in the book, there's a character that Spike plays. In the book, there's a character called Shorty, mm -hmm. who really didn't exist. He's a combination of people that they, they, they made into one character for the book. In fact, when Malcolm, uh, well, he was called Malcolm Little at the time, when he was arrested, uh, he was arrested with another guy named Malcolm. Mm -hmm. His friend was named Malcolm, but they, they just put two or three characters together. So we, we, we stayed fairly close to it. Yeah. Did your hair recover, man? You, you worked that hair during the movie. Fried, dyed, broke to the side. <laughs> you know, red, sometimes green. There's a couple of scenes in the movie you'll see me in a hat. If you look real close, there's nothing underneath it. Because my, my hair fell out. <laughs> and it turned green at one point? Oh, it turned, it turned green at one point, man. It looked like a, like, a, like a, you know, those calico cats that are all different colors, like blonde, and it was wild. It was one. I better be careful. Yeah. <laughs> Go check him out. This is Denzel Washington. Thanks for watching Cleveland Live Music. It's awfully bright out here. I'd click on another one of my videos. Quit looking into the sun. Your mother told you not to do that. Please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to support the channel more, there's GoFundMe and Patreon information in the video descriptions. Ooh. Ooh!